Hello there. Welcome to another video. Um, today's a little different. I, number one, I'm holding a microphone. That's very unusual, right? Um, my microphone stand, it doesn't work anymore. It's, it's kaput. I need a new one. I'm, I can't talk today. This is like my third outtake. I need a new one. <laughs> um, and so, uh, in the video, you'll hear me speaking through this piece of crap right here. So, um, the audio quality is not going to be great. A mic stand is on my list of things to purchase, but, you know, I buy astronomy equipment, so I have no money. <laughs> um, so, in this video, I'm going to be processing some data that was provided to me by a fellow astrophotographer. Um, I just became a part of a Discord group. And in this group, we share images, and this was a stacked image uh, that he was wanting people to process. So I uh, processed it, and they were asking how I did certain things, so I decided to just go ahead and make a tutorial video on how I did it. So um, it's a 100% broadband image. No filters were used. It was taken at a Bortle 2 site. I didn't ask him how much time he spent on target, but uh, the data was pretty nice. It was uh, pretty easy to work with. It's a quick and easy process on broadband targets like this one, which is M45. So if uh, you're struggling or you're finding yourself confused on how to do color balancing in PixInsight, this might be a good way for you to uh, start off. It's also a good beginning point for, uh, for you if uh, you're just not familiar with some tools inside Pix Insight. Um, so I hope that is beneficial. Uh, I did, however, think about this later on after I had recorded everything, but um, I, I use Topaz Denoise AI as part of my noise reduction process. There are other ways that you can go about doing this, and I think I did mention it at one point in the video. You can use the multi-scale linear transform tool inside Pix Insight. Um, I'll record a video someday going over like how to use this uh, in depth, but I personally don't like using it because it gets rid of detail, just like um, the camera raw filter does inside Photoshop. You can use it and then blend it. You can also use masks to prevent it from getting into those like uh, bright areas or uh, specific areas that you don't want it to touch. But personally, I just prefer to use Topaz Denoise AI. There is, um, so Topaz Denoise AI does provide a 15 day trial, I believe. So if you're following along and you just kind of want to see what it's like, um, go download it. And I think all it takes is an email. Um, it's a good program. It's very powerful. And I think that after using it a couple times, and I think after using it in this process that you'll see here, you, you might be encouraged to go and purchase a copy. I know I was. So, uh, I'm not going to talk your ear off. Well, I am I am about to talk your ear off in this tutorial, but <laughs> uh, I'm not going to do it any further at this intro. So, I hope that you enjoy the tutorial. Let me know if it helps you, and um, let me know if you have any recommendations on how I can improve on teaching you, or if I should slow down a little bit, or um, maybe go over something specific that maybe you're confused about. Um, that helps me come up with more content and it also, um, it helps me with like doing stuff like this. It's, it takes practice in order to become efficient at speaking to a camera. And, uh, I'm kind of an introvert myself. So <laughs> sitting in front of the camera all the time is, uh, it puts me outside of my comfort zone. So I like it. Um, but I like it. So <laughs> I hope you enjoyed the video. Take care. Clear skies. Hey, uh, how's it going, guys? Well, I was asked to show how I did that process of the Pleiades, so I figured I'd just show you real quick. Uh, this really didn't take me too long, so yeah, it should be fairly fast. PixInsight makes things relatively easy, too, so if you're not using it, I'd suggest it for this. So right off the bat, I'm going to nuke this uh, using an automatic stretch up here, and that just basically reveals everything that's going on in this image. Right away, I can see that there's a gradient, and that's just caused by vignetting here. Uh, I'm guessing just flats either weren't taken, or they just 
didn't calibrate the vignetting out completely, but that's very easy to take care of. Uh, the other thing that I noticed right away is there's a lot of chrominance noise. So that's this uh, rainbow colored noise that's back here. Both of these are extraordinarily easy to remove if you like are familiar with some of the tools inside Pix Insight. So the, uh, the first thing that I want to do is I want to take care of the gradient because what it also does is it takes care of any kind of color gradients as well. And I don't want to mess with the colors, uh, you know, like the, the color noise here until I've also corrected out the color gradient. I'm going to take care of that by running dynamic background extraction. Click inside of the image and I normally just leave everything to default except for tolerance. Tolerance is set to 1.5 and that's because in these darker areas if you don't set it to 1.5 it might not register those. See how they turn red? So um, you just set the tolerance a little bit higher and it fixes that for you. So I'm just going to quickly go into these corners here and I'm clicking through background sky. You don't want to click into any of this nebulosity because you don't want the application or the, or the tool to think that this is background. And I'm like super random with where I'm clicking because I'm kind of just like gazing through the image and I click where I see like a dark spot. So there's no real thought out pattern to what I'm doing. I'm just finding background, making sure that there's not really a lot of nebulosity. Like you can actually see there's a little bit of like dust cloud in this area. So I just try to click on the darkest spots in it. Um, you also don't want to click on stars because then the program will be like, oh, okay, like, I guess that's a value for background as well. It doesn't hurt if you click on, like, a couple, but just do your best not to click on a bunch of them. So, like, you can see some faint stuff right in here, and you don't want to click on any of that faint stuff. I'm trying to click on the darkest regions. Let's see what that looks like. I'm gonna change this to division and that takes care of the vignetting the checkbox to execute and then we're gonna stretch it again and it took care of the majority of it it's not perfect but um, it did it did a lot better or it, it, it did make it look a lot better and this is what it's correcting out that's what it uh, took out of the image there so when you do this it also slightly introduces some noise but Generally speaking, it's not it's not too terrible. Okay, so after I do that, I am going to run multi-scale linear transform, and uh, you can find that up in processes, all processes, multi-scale linear transformation right here. Default values are this. Um, but I have a little thing that's saved right here that allows me, that I've <laughs> worked on and uh, I've saved over time. So I'd normally just double click this and I run it. Um, you want to change the default from four to seven and then change the values to be more aggressive up the top and less aggressive as you get further, hot, like higher up on, on the layers. So basically, all of your images are built on wavelet layers. And the the lower the layer, the smaller the pixel. So you want to be dealing with noise at the smallest, at the lowest level. Um, 
So I normally, I'll take like noise out, chrominance noise especially, up to like five or six. Um, and I'm not incredibly aggressive with it a lot, but um, with this image, there is a lot of chrominance noise. So I think that I will leave it to these default values. And you can, you can copy this and, or you can basically just like, mimic these values if you'd like and i think this does a really good job with something that's pretty aggressive here if it wasn't like um if there wasn't this much noise i would just turn off these other layers or i would reduce this threshold number down to like 0.5 and then one and then two and then leave that at three or whatever and i can show you the differences here real quick so i'll leave it at this right and then i'll run that And then you can see right away that's a dramatic difference from what it was. Okay, um, so yeah, you can see that it's uh, it's already made like a dramatic difference here. So if I was to change these numbers, right? If I changed this, if I took that away, set this to 0.25, I said, yeah, okay. And then let's put this at one and then two and uh, 2.5, let's try that. Sure, actually let's do 0 0.7, I'm trying to show a big difference here, so 0 0.75, and uh, 1.5, yeah, let's do that. Okay, I'm gonna copy this. So basically I just clicked on this little tab and dragged it over and it made a clone, so that way we can do a direct comparison afterwards. So I can tell like right away that you, you can see that there's, I'm pointing to my screen. You can see that there's a little bit of like a, a coloring, like it's like striping, it's very faint um, where you don't have that here. And so that's that top layer, chrominance noise that it, it hasn't removed. Um, at a higher level, like if I was to zoom out a little bit, you can see that rainbowing a lot more than here. At least personally, I can. And um, so that's why for this particular image, I, I didn't feel too bad about being a little bit more aggressive with the chrominance noise reduction. So I'm gonna use this copy. I'm gonna use the clone. Well, actually, I'll just undo this and close that and then use my values that I have saved here. Do it again because I want to keep all of the uh, history for this particular image. Okay, so that did the trick. Okay, so next is... Uh, color correction. So um, there is a color calibration script that I use and I can go and find that and, and paste it in the discord for you guys if you'd like. It's really, really straightforward. Um, but I've discovered that it basically just uses two tools um, that are found in here. It's background neutralization and color calibration. So the first one that you run is background neutralization, and then you run color calibration on top of that. Uh, so that's what the script does, but um, this is what the script looks like when you run it. auto color. It's right here. All right. 
So after it does a color calibration, I close the automatic uh, histogram stretch and then I actually stretch the image. I take it from linear to nonlinear. So I select the picture and I start the stretching process under histogram transformation. All right, so now we have a an image that's been color calibrated. It's been stretched. I feel like I'm going to pull this back just a little bit more because just a touch. Okay. Next thing I want to do is I want to run SCNR on this. And that, again, can be found in processes, all processes. And then SCNR right here. Change that to green that over and that got rid of the green tinge that was throughout the image and boom I mean you've already got a really really nice looking image um, so then what I do uh, so you can see that there's like some purple halos around some of this there are a couple things there are a couple ways that you can go about taking care of that um, manually what you do is you create a star mask. So go to all processes, star mask. These are the default values. Um, we'll try it with the default values. Okay. And then click on your image, invert, image invert apply your star mask by dragging this tab underneath the tab here press control k to deactivate the red overlay go back into your scnr and drag over the green remove the mask invert the image and the purples are gone around your stars and I'll show you a direct comparison. See that? You can see like there's a little bit of purple that there isn't purple here anymore. So I've done that. Um, and this is honestly where I would go into noise reduction. Um, I use Topaz Denoise AI, so I can show you how I do that. And then I blend that with a copy here. So I'll save this. I accidentally just saved it as a JPEG. These are the settings that I use to save the files. Open up Topaz. I'll also open up Photoshop because I'm going to blend the two images together. Where did I put that? And then I'm going to remove noise. And I'm going to pull down sharpening just a little bit. So that really helps take care of a lot of that noise there. But see, images aren't supposed to be completely noiseless. They're not supposed to look like paintings, you know? It's not supposed to be like blech. Uh, so these 
images, night nighttime images are supposed to have some amount of noise in it because uh, that's just how the cameras work, right? So what I do is I take this image, I'm gonna save that, right? And then I'm gonna go into Photoshop and open up the tutorial and the copy of tutorial denoise whenever it's done processing. So I'm copying this control A, control C, and I'm gonna paste it right on here. And then I'm gonna change the opacity to 50%. So it's literally reduced the noise by half. And that looks really, really good to me. Um, if you want to be more aggressive with it, you can. That's 60. That's 70. 60 looks pretty good. I'm going to make a new layer by pressing Control Alt Shift N E. And then I'm going to go into adjustments and levels, and I'm going to pull the levels down to just tame the background a little bit. You don't want to clip the black, so I'm not touching this black line here, because if you touch the that black line, you're going to start removing some of this like outer dust areas. So you don't want to do that. You just want to kind of give it some contrast. Cool. And then I'm going to save that. And I'm going to open it back up in PixInsight. And I'm going to give it some saturation. So there are a couple ways that you can do this as well. Um, you can go into all processes, curves transformation, open it up here and just add some saturation that way. That's nice. However, but what it does is it adds a little bit of saturation to your background sky. Um, so what I like to do, and you can, you can get around that by literally just upping the saturation here and lowering it here. Um, but it's not as effective as this other method. So what I do is I click on this button here and that creates a luminance copy of this and then I use processes all processes LRGB combination alphabetical order here we go click on the box over here click on the luminance that you just made and drag this saturation down to like 250 300 if you um, haven't done chrominance noise reduction, you can also do it here. It doesn't hurt to do it again. And boom, you've got yourself a nicely naturally color balanced image. You can do it again if you'd like, if you like a little bit more saturation. That's a little too saturated for me. I'm going to pull that back. Yeah, that's better. Um, and I'm still seeing a little bit of a greenness to this. So I'm going to come into Curves Transformation, open this up, click on my green channel, and just barely pull this back. It's not much, but... go 
with that. And then... Um, the stars look a little too sharp, maybe. Uh, so I'm going to take this back into Photoshop and do a couple more things. So I'm going to save this. I'm going to open it back up. Update it. And, okay, the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to control A, control C, click on new, okay, paste it in there, click on image, mode, lab color, flatten the image out, click on your channel, lightness, and we're going to do a lightness layer on top of that, and it's going to brighten up some of the uh, dustiness. So, control A, control C, paste it, change your layers to luminosity and what we're gonna do is create a mask and then invert could click on properties and invert it grab your paintbrush tool make sure it's a reasonable sized paintbrush we're gonna paint in these bright areas that we want to reveal There's some like nice dustiness out here as well. This is like me rushing. <laughs> oh man, that's funny. Okay, I'm gonna change the opa the opacity to like. 30 so it's not as intense and then I'm gonna feather it a lot could probably feather it a little bit more yep and that just brightened it up a little bit Um, and then I'm going to create a new layer and then I'm going to create an additional layer on top of that. Control shift N E. I have this tool, um, called astronomy tools. You can find it online. I can also link that if you guys don't have it. Um, but in the tools, there's like a bunch of like nice little things that you can find in here. And what it, this one in particular is going to do, it's going to help soften these stars up a little. So, less crunchy, more fuzzy. And then I'm going to change that opacity to like 30%. 40%. 40% looks pretty good. 50%. Yeah. That looks pretty good. 50%. There you go. That's how I did that. Um, that's <laughs> basically exactly how I did that. So you can save the image, open it back up in PixInsight, and voila. That's all I did. Um, it's really, really fast. Um, I didn't really take my time. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, that's, I mean, it's a broadband image. The data looks great. There's a lot of details here. Um, you, the guy captured it at a Bortle 2 site. So yeah, there wasn't really a lot to have to process. It's just a, a quick color balance and some noise reduction. So yeah, that's it. Hope you enjoyed. Hope you learned something. Let me know if you have any questions. See ya.